issues around content moderation. Senator Ted Cruz, as usual, very concerned with Twitter's Jack Dorsey and almighty power to uh, suppress rather conservative speech. And more importantly, speech from conservatives who are trying to voice their perspective on the voter fraud and election interference issue. Take a look. Your answer is always, well, once we silence you, we can choose to allow you to speak. But you are engaged in publishing decisions. Let me shift to a different topic. Mr. Dorsey, does voter fraud exist? I, I don't know for certain. Are, are you an expert in voter fraud? No, I'm not. Well, why then is Twitter right now putting purported warnings on virtually any statement about voter fraud? We're, we're simply linking to a broader conversation so that people have more information. No, no, you're not. You put up a page that says, quote, voter fraud of any kind is exceedingly rare in the United States. That's not linking to a broader conversation. That's taking a disputed policy position. And you're a publisher when you're doing that. You're entitled to take a policy position, but you don't get to pretend you're not a publisher and get a special benefit under Section 230 as a result. You go, Mr. Cruz. All right, my next guest, the executive director of Unhyphenated America. And yes, this guy has fell victim to the social media censoring himself. Christopher Harris joining our show. Christopher, thanks for coming back on. How you doing, brother? Hey, Dan, doing well, doing well. Did you watch Other some of that stuff fact, today so far? I was listening to some of it. Your blood and, boiling? And just, was <laughs> just a little bit. You know, Dan, I had about 51,000 followers uh, on our Unhyphenated America Facebook page. You know, and, and th let's think about this, Dan. People specifically went and clicked like and follow, right? They, they actually wanted Facebook to use their algorithms to make sure they could see the Unhyphenated America Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened on a regular basis, Dan? People couldn't see it. They would shadow ban, and, and that term shadow banning, they don't want to talk about that, but it's a very real thing. And the funny thing is, Dan, Facebook actually will give you their numbers to show you. Like, I actually have the numbers to show that a year and a half ago, we were averaging two to five million views a month. And then, like, sometime around, like, December of last year, we were down to about 150,000 views. In a wow. Month. Yeah, we actually, we actually had gained 5,000 more people who had clicked like. Remember, they said, hey, Facebook, we want to see unhyphenated America. So how do you gain 5,000 new followers but your page views go from in the millions down to barely 100,000, that's called shadow banning. That's why they should be sitting there in those congressional hearings, Dan. And they're lying when they're saying, well, we, we don't know. Yeah, I love Dorsey's answer to Mr. Cruz today and, and other senators. Well, we just put that warning there and then we open it up for a broader discussion. No, you don't. You're telling people point blank, like Senator Cruz pointed out, that voter fraud doesn't exist. And if it does, it's so small, eh, it's negligible. It doesn't even matter to the election outcome. Really? That's not opening it for a discussion. Opening it up for discussion would allow the president, you, me, anybody, to sound off about things we've uncovered concerning voter fraud and election fraud, and then let it all open for discussion. What you're doing, Mr. Dorsey and Zuckerberg, is you are silencing other people's viewpoints, opinions, and primarily, because I don't see it happen on the left, conservatives only. Have you seen any oh, data that shows they ever stop Democrats or liberal point of views on these platforms? I sure as heck don't. You know, Dan, I actually have uh, went through the, the hassle of trying to protest and say, hey, you know, this person said or did this or that uh, that was objectionable based on what Facebook's supposed community standards, which I refer to as their communist standards. Yeah. Uh, and, and I've reported <laughs> those things. And, you know, they got back to me. And only one time have they said, oh, yeah, that was objectionable. It violated standards. The other times they said, yeah, we looked. Ah, we didn't see anything. Now, Every conservative I know who has a big voice, who has multiple thousands of followers, every single one of them has been at the very least shadow banned and have had their pages unpublished or they've been put in the proverbial Facebook jail. I mean, there's so many memes that go around the joke. It's like, you know, it's like you got the teardrop. I should go ahead and get a teardrop tattooed on my face for how many times <laughs> I've been put in Facebook jail. You know, I mean, it's like I'm going to start making a shank and everything out of, uh, you know, out of whatever materials I can find, man, because I'm a repeat felon when it comes to Facebook jail. But what have I done, Dan? I've simply voiced a dissenting opinion 
and they can't have it. Dan, you know, here's the yeah. problem with them, Dan. They cannot have people voicing a dissenting opinion because they know that in a marketplace of ideas, they lose. People choose freedom when they get the opportunity, especially when they've already been informed and educated on what the truth is. And I'll say like this, there's a description of the Bible that says, knowing the truth shall set you free. They don't want you to know the truth. And people like myself, we're dedicated to sharing the truth. Yeah, and you're entitled to your opinions. You're not entitled to your own facts. Um, I love the message that Twitter puts up now too. Anything dealing with the election, it says, you know, <laughs> yeah. the election results are da 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 da. So yesterday, the president had tweeted out and Facebooked and the rest of them saying, watch OANN, real great, giving us a little props here at One America News. The minute I read it on Twitter and Facebook, they have the election warning notice up. He didn't yes. even mention the election. He just said, watch this network, real great. That's it. And they're putting their well, warning up. I mean, are we allowed to actually still refer to him as the president? I don't know. Are we going to end right, up in the gulag? Right, because the media in says in the it's President-elect yeah, Biden. The, and... the mainstream media said that, that, you know, it's President Biden. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Last time I checked, you're not president until you're inaugurated as president, which is January 20th, right? And you're not even the declared president-elect until the Electoral College Thank you. gets together, which is still, what, uh, December 13th? So we're and still certified. Like, Get together, uh, vote, yes, and certify. Yeah, yeah. And, and they don't even want to talk about that. But yeah, you know, Dan, uh, they act like they stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night because <laughs> supposedly Facebook is the expert, and not just Facebook and Twitter, they're the expert on everything. If you try to mention like, hey, I have a, a different opinion on some medical issue like COVID, right? They're like, oh no, you, you can't express that. Well, my doctor says this. Well, my do they're saying their doctor disagrees. Well, you know, there's a reason why they always say, get a second opinion. Or maybe yep. even a third opinion. So if I go and get different opinions that disagree with yours, you're trying to tell me you're going to lock me down for going to get a second opinion. Imagine if the medical field was able to say, no, listen, I'm your doctor. I say this. And if you try to go and talk to another doctor, I'm going to put you in jail. That's what they're essentially doing, whether it's you expressing a different opinion on COVID or you talking about the elections, they don't want you to express something that goes counter to their narrative because they're trying to control your thoughts. They sure are. Christopher Harris, the executive director of Unhyphenated America. Keep up the fight, brother. Don't give up. We all have to keep pushing. And let's hope that these senators really keep these boys at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram's feet to the fire and hold them accountable Amen. and change the rules. You take care. Be safe. Thank you, Dan.